Good evening to you. Mark Saddle, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for my evening update. Going to specifically focus here on Ian uh, right now in this update. A lot of people uh, very concerned about it, and rightfully so. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, take a look at some of the things that transpired today, a couple of model things, a couple things to look for, and then a little bit of an explainer on a couple of products from the National Hurricane Center. And finally, I'll wrap up uh, giving a brief overview of what our plans might be to cover this along the Gulf Coast. There's still a lot of uncertainty, and we don't know for sure, but we're starting to get there. All right, good to have you along with me again this evening. So let's take a look at what we've got from the 5 p.m. main advisory. Remember, the advisories come out 5, 11, 5, and 11, with intermediate advisories uh, several hours after that, like 8 p.m., 2 a.m., 8 a.m., and 2 p.m. So you get a bunch of them each day, but the main advisory package uh, it would be 5 p.m., 11 p.m., 5 a.m., 11 a.m. You follow? Good. All right, so 45-mile-per-hour um, winds, pressure about 1,003. There has been a lot of reconnaissance data gathered from Ian. Lots of planes down there, the P-3 Orion with tail-based radar, the C-130J Hurricane Hunters. There's going to be Gulfstream jet missions around the environment to figure out what's happening in the upper levels of the atmosphere. More data, more data, more data. That really helps with getting the computer models initialized properly. So there's a ton of data today, and that is a good thing. Real quick, just looking at the overall um, infographic key messages here. Obviously, the Cayman Islands coming up first for potential impacts here. Jamaica, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, that vicinity. You all know the drill. Even though it's been a few years, that's for sure, uh, you could have some problems here, especially if Ian rapidly intensifies. This is what the forecast track looks like. From the tried and true uh, hurricane track map here from the National Hurricane Center, um, you know, sometimes I'll show our interactive map, but tonight I figured I'll show this one again. It is forecast to become a major hurricane in the Caribbean Sea and through the Gulf of Mexico. And then this is the five-day forecast. This is going to change. And whenever I see people say, it's going to change. It's headed here, but it's going to change. Well, of course it's going to change. I don't want to sound too um, you know, snarky about it, but it is absolutely going to change, especially out at days four and five. What we don't want to see, and we usually don't now in the modern era, are drastic changes one way or the other, or what we call left of track or right of track. In this situation, east would be right, west would be left. We don't want drastic changes. So they're going to be pretty subtle over time as the consensus models change and things like that. But as for now, the center is forecast to be somewhere in the vicinity of the Big Bend of Florida in about five days. But that will absolutely change because we're gradually starting to narrow down the pattern in the atmosphere, the intensity of Ian, and all of that is going to get wrapped up into what eventually happens. And also reminding you, don't be focusing on exactly where that dot ends up. You need to be thinking about the broader impacts, the waves that are going to come out from this, the big storm surge this could push in front of it. I have been seeing a few people talking about, and this is certainly in the realm of possibility, there is not much to stop this from becoming a Category 5 hurricane at some point. Absolutely not. The environment is going to be there for the ceiling on this to be very, very high. And remember, intensity forecasting is where the least amount of skill is from even the greatest minds and the greatest computer models that we have. The intensity part is where it is the most difficult. Hurricane Michael was forecast to be about a 70 mile per hour, maybe 70 knot or 80 mile per hour hurricane near Mexico Beach. They got the track pretty good on the first forecast five days out, I think it was, but they were off substantially, obviously, on the wind part and the pressure part, Michael ended up being, of course, a Category 5. A lot of people thought it would be sheared, lopsided, late season storm, etc. That's not what happened. So each one of these is different. All right, That is very important to understand. And remember that the effects from something like a powerful hurricane extend even out beyond this cone area here. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot to digest. There is. And so as we put all of this together, I want to try to get you to focus on your area and what you can expect for your area, your house, your address, your street, your neighborhood, instead of 
the bigger picture, where's it going to go? Just think about, well, what could I expect in my area? And then start looking at that uh, at the end of the day. Rainfall, storm surge, high winds, things like that. Uh, and then these products up here, this is part of that explainer I was telling you. There's wind speed probabilities, the arrival times of winds, flash flooding potential. You know, the Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center provide a wealth of data here. There's the watches and warnings. And right now, uh, hurricane warning in effect for the Caymans with a tropical storm watch here on the eastern side of the Caymans. It's got a small wind field now, but that is going to expand. So there's a lot. There is. And once it gets close to the United States, we will start getting storm surge guidance, of course. All right. All right. Um, so one of the things I want to look at here uh, first, let's go over to the satellite view just to point out a few things. Definitely getting better organized, but no real signs of rapid intensification yet, but I think that's going to happen, especially as it gets near and beyond the Cayman Islands. Somewhere through here, I think it is when it's going to do its rapid intensification, and then that could stay very strong into the north and eastern Gulf of Mexico from there. Real quick, the rest of the tropics, just you know, don't want to ignore it all. There's what's left over of Fiona, quite a powerful extra-tropical storm now, transitioned over into a non-tropical entity. A lot of disturbance out here, starting to fizzle away. And then what's left over of um, Hermine, this is Gaston, it's leftovers and then more energy coming off Africa. We are far from done, even after Ian. We'll worry about that later. Close up, satellite animation as the sun sets here over Ian. Uh, definitely starting to get that S shape to it overall, indicating it is starting to get better organized. There's some deep convection or thunderstorms in the atmosphere. They bubble up. That helps to release heat. It warms the atmosphere. It's just a process. That's all this is. It is a process of thermodynamics and the atmosphere and the ocean working together. And if the atmosphere cooperates and gives light winds in the upper atmosphere for it to all just fan out like that, instead of wind coming across it from any singular direction like this, then that heat engine can work very efficiently with the extremely warm water temperatures. Uh, I mean, extremely, that's a little bit of a stretch. They are definitely warm, warmer than average, and certainly warm enough to support a very intense hurricane coming out of the Caribbean and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. So back over here, let me just show you the discussion. A very, very important product and I want to try to guide more people to reading this. It's pretty technical. It's not ridiculously so. It's still written in plain English enough. But it is the discussion that is written from the forecaster. This is not generated by AI or a template or a computer or whatever. This is somebody writing it. And who that somebody is tonight uh, is forecaster Reinhardt. Uh, I met him at the National Hurricane Conference um, back in April down in Orlando for what it's worth. So let's just read this. I'll go through it, and then I'm going to explain what some of it means. The satellite presentation of Ian has improved. We can all agree to that. We just looked at it. The associated deep convection so it shows increased signs of organization. We saw that. And the deep layer shear appears to be diminished, and we saw that. Um, by the way, I have not read this discussion yet. So what we just looked at now matches up with this. Okay, so that all makes sense. Upper level outflow, very extensive invisible satellite imagery. Air Force uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft found 850 millibars, that's about 5,000 feet up, of about 44 knots with several SFMR, that is step frequency microwave radiometer, retrievals greater than 40 knots, while drop sign data, they drop these nice little drop signs down there, and those give in situ measurements, I think it's every half second or something like that, it's amazing. So there's all this data, that's the bottom line. And what they're getting at is a blend of all that data supports an initial intensity of 40 knots or 45 miles per hour. <sighs> the aircraft data suggests the center could be reforming slightly west of previous estimates, uh, just a little bit. So the initial motion is an uncertain 265 degrees. That is just south of due west. Due west is 270. Ian is expected to move westward through early Sunday before turning northwestward around the southwestern periphery of a ridge to the north. Big old area of high pressure sitting off to its north. Um, and then a um, north northwestern to northward motion, northward motion is forecast on Monday and Tuesday as the center of Ian passes near or over the western tip of Cuba and emerges in the southeast Gulf of Mexico. Overall, the westward trend in the track models, that's very important right here, 
it continues, the overall guidance. With the latest GFS on the far left side of the guidance envelope and the ECMWF on the right edge. I'm telling you, <laughs> my friend and colleague and one of our supporters, Matt, it's like Battle of the Titans, and uh, that's what it is. These two powerhouse mobile models at odds with each other again. The ECMWF on the right edge. So the track forecast is still highly uncertain at days four and five. I mean, they are telling you the truth right there. That is enormous. That is enormous right there. When you see them say highly uncertain, okay, that word highly modifies the word uncertain. It's English. It's important. Days four and five, highly uncertain, with the GFS and ECMWF positions 200 miles apart by four days. There is significant spread noted even among the GFS ensemble members, so even the ensembles don't agree with the GFS operational, with positions that range from the north central Gulf of Mexico to the west coast of Florida. Hopefully, they say, data collected from special radio sound releases, that is, these balloons that they send up with radio sons on them, those have been added. So special radio son releases um, and a NOAA Gulfstream 4 jet. I was talking about that earlier. That will help better resolve the steering flow around Ian and the deep layer trough. I'll show you that in a minute. That is forecast to be over the eastern U.S. early next week. The latest track forecast is once again adjusted westward and further adjustments may be needed given the increased uncertainty in the day three to five period. Now. I know because I've seen it. There seems to be a lot of celebration, and I understand it. You've got to kind of relieve some of that stress there. Release it, I mean, and some stress relief. Along the Florida Peninsula, people sounding the all clear. Generally speaking, it is better news today. Yes. But could it still come back to the E some? Yes, because there is a considerable spread in the guidance. They just talked about that. So to say that there's no chance that E in turns and heads towards Tampa or Fort Myers or something like that. It is not zero yet, so the Florida Peninsula has not escaped direct impacts from this potential powerful hurricane. But it is starting to look a little bit better. We can agree to that. Finally, in the intensity paragraph here, Ian is expected to significantly strengthen, that's important too, over the next few days as it moves within a low shear environment over sea surface temperatures greater than 30 Celsius that's getting it, 85, 86, 87 Fahrenheit in the Northwest Caribbean Sea as the structure of the cyclone continues to improve and it develops an inner core. The rapid intensification situation appears likely and the ship's model continues to show that potential with a 66% chance of 65 knots of intensity increases in 72 hours. Wow, that's what I'm saying. This could become a Cat 5, wouldn't shock me at all. The NHC intensity forecast has been raised substantially through 96 hours, and it now shows Ian reaching major hurricane strength by late Monday before it nears western Cuba. These changes closely follow the IVCN and HCCA. These are consensus aids. Although the, there remains guidance even higher, I'll show you that too. Ian is forecast to remain a major hurricane as it moves northward across the eastern Gulf of Mexico and approaches Florida. But, I'm batting the butt. Environmental conditions could become less favorable late in the period due to southerly shear associated with the aforementioned trough. But Ian is expected to remain a large, huge word there, folks. Seriously, that's a clue. A large and powerful hurricane through the period. So even if it were to weaken, it is still going to have pushed this big surge towards the coast. So people are going to already start thinking, oh, that's only going to be a two at landfall or maybe a one it's weakening, it's overblown, a lot of hype, and then you forget it already made a giant storm surge. Remember Katrina? It was a 175 mile per hour beast. It weakened down to a three, from a five to a three, but it still had a 28 plus foot storm surge for coastal Mississippi. Not saying that's gonna happen this time, but weakening doesn't mean lessening of all of the impacts. It's very important. I know these things because I've been doing this for 30 years. I want to make sure you know these things. So don't start thinking, huh, less you know, favorable conditions, a less powerful hurricane. I don't need to worry about it. You still might, because a lot of that energy put into the water there, the Gulf of Mexico, will still be there, even if Ian weakens off of these potential peaks here. And then here's those key messages again. Uh, and then, of course, the forecast explicitly stating here, category four intensity, 
in the Gulf of Mexico. That'll get a lot of people's attention, no doubt. All right, uh, where did I want to go from here? So current storm info reminding you about this great dashboard again. Uh, this is the consensus models uh, and others from 18Z today. There's that spread in the guidance beyond three days out. Pretty tightly clustered to 72 hours. Yay! Beyond 72 hours, boo, no good. You know, it's not helpful. Um, people are, you know, some folks are thinking maybe Louisiana could be at play. Yes, it is possible. I'll show you the ensembles in a minute. There's a non-zero chance for all of these areas through here. A non-zero chance. That's not the same as a high probability, but it's not zero. The, the consensus is right up here on the eastern side of, uh, well, Apalachicola is right there. So near the western portion of the Big Bend. That is your consensus right through there. We'll have to just see how all of this plays out. If it shifts more to the west with time, then you start to put more of the panhandle at risk, and you diminish the risk here to the peninsula almost entirely. But we're not there yet. All right? All right. Real quick, looking at the euro from the 12Z run today, just to give you an idea of what it was showing. Uh, it comes through. The Caribbean starts to get us act together. I think it's going to be much stronger than this, that the euro is showing only 9.93 crosses the extreme western tip of Cuba. That won't do much to it. And the euro is still pretty insistent that it gets really close to Tampa Bay there and uh, really starts to deepen that. Again, this is my concern. That deepens very quickly. By deepening, I mean it strengthens. It's very, very quick to deepen there. Let's go back just a few frames. It goes off the tip of Cuba at 985 rapidly intensifies by almost 30 millibars there, a little bit more than that, to 9.53, slowing down, that would be a nightmare. We don't want that to happen. That, I mean, duh, but it's just bad, bad, bad. Luckily, this is five days out, and there are going to be changes. Now, we could spend an hour, I can't do that, because I can get this online for you guys, explaining why does the euro show what it shows. So let's just go to exactly hour 120. Let's broaden this out to the bigger picture over here. And um, you know what? I'm going to flip it over actually to what we call the Conus shot or Conus, whatever. And the lower, or I'm sorry, upper dynamics. I've just got to slow down. Uh, and look at the 500 millibar height and the sea level pressure. So the trough earlier on comes through. You see that right there? That's the trough. There it is. Clear as day. And that creates this weakness that erodes the ridge here. There's just less air piled up between Ian and the trough. And so it's going to head in that direction, kind of like a path of least resistance. How strong this trough is, how much it digs down, and how intense Ian is will determine how close that trough kind of attracts it. So what happens is the trough kind of goes by here. It looks like starts to lift out. You can see that these heights are rising, these oranges creep to the north. You see that? They're, they're low there, and then they start to rise. The heights rise, uh, and the trough lifts out. So there's not much to sort of let it tilt in that direction, so to speak. So it slows down. And then it just kind of sits there because the pattern becomes more, more zonal. It's not quite zonal, but it certainly isn't this big, deep trough like that. It's a little bit more zonal, and that doesn't make much motion happen. So a slow-moving Category 3 hurricane right off of Tampa, huge thumbs down for that. Um, just tremendous uncertainty. I hate this. I wish it was clearer. We all do, but that is what we know for now. All right, so basically just keep doing what you're doing. Watch. Don't obsess. Get some sleep. Make some basic preparations. Just a few extra items here and there. Make sure you got gas. Hugely important. And from anywhere along the Florida Peninsula all the way over to maybe Mobile, Alabama, just be thinking about what am I going to do if this whole event really does come my way over the next few days. All right? All right. Don't forget, on YouTube, help us grow it. Please, subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. I hope you like what we're doing. And share, share, share. That's the best way to get this message out to as many people as possible. I do appreciate it. The YouTube interaction has been fantastic. And uh, I do really appreciate it. It shows me that you seem to appreciate what I do and my back-end team. Speaking of all of that, what are we going to do? We're going to keep waiting, kind of like you are. Um, might be leaving Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where I am right now. That's where my home and office are tomorrow for Florida. But 
If it's more towards the panhandle, we may wait to leave on Monday. So that's it. There's not much of a plan yet. Matt and I are getting a lot of stuff together. Matt is from Colorado. He, again, is one of our supporters. He comes to help out on a volunteer basis to make my job easier. We have a, a whole back-end team as well. Um, but we don't know. We don't know exactly what we're going to do because we don't know anything more than we see here. That's the bottom line. So stay tuned. Once we know, you'll know. All right? I don't have a title card just yet because I put this together real quick before telling Kari that I needed a title card. But we'll, you know, add the thumbnail later. Have a good rest of your Saturday night. Thanks for putting um, time and effort into watching me. I do appreciate it. I'm Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow morning.